to tell. This is an incredible summer crowd. Good evening, everyone. I don't think this is on. Hello. Good evening. Wow, what a fantastic crowd. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, hello, my name is Ellen Alderman. I am the Managing Director of Public Programs here at the Graham Foundation. What am I? No, now I'm the Deputy Director of Public Programs here at the Graham, and it's really my thing. <laughs> Thank you. It is my pleasure to welcome you all here. Um, thank you for coming out tonight. It is so lovely to have you, and as we welcome scholar Christina Sharp, who will be in conversation with Torquese Dyson this evening, the artist of our current exhibition. This event is the second in a series of programs that we've organized as an extension of Torquese's pedagogical project, the Winter Wells Drawing School for Environmental Liberation, so named for Jamaican writer and cultural theorist Sylvia Winter and American civil rights leader Ida B. Wells. I am so grateful to Turquoise, not only for seizing her fellowship and exhibition here at the Graham as an opportunity to experiment and work out formal ideas in space, but also for the ways in which she's using the programming and upcoming series of workshops as a platform to pull together practitioners from diverse range of fields to discuss complex and pressing questions about agency and the ways in which we inhabit our world today. Over the next very ambitious month, we are looking forward to presenting a series of intensive workshops at the Graham that will create opportunities for the public to directly engage with some of the ideas in the exhibition. Uh, some of these projects include global warming, uneven development in new geographies with artist and designer Amanda Williams, nomadicity movement in improvisation with artist and activist Andres Luis Hernandez and dancer, dancer Zachary Fabri, and architecture and liquidity with landscape architect Ron Henderson. I hope you'll check out our website for more details about how to RSVP and join us for all of those. Additionally, we're thrilled that the poet Dion Brand will present a reading and reflection on Torquese's work in the galleries this Saturday afternoon at three o'clock. So come for the double header. It's gonna be incredible. Um, I hope that in addition to tonight's discussion with Christina, that you will come back to participate as well as help us spread the word about the upcoming events. Following tonight's discussion, we'll reserve some time for a Q&A, after which we'd like to invite you all downstairs for a glass of wine to continue the conversation. Many of the program participants are with, here with us tonight, and the galleries and bookshop will be open late, so please stay and enjoy the house and the courtyard. Additionally, on a short but bittersweet note, I'd like to acknowledge the contributions of our bookshop coordinator, Zoe Cowder Nailbuff, who will be leaving us at the end of the week to pursue a master's degree in the Critical Curatorial Conceptual Practices Program at Columbia University this fall. <laughs> Yay, Zoe! <laughs> Zoe has proven herself as an incredible asset and colleague in so many facets of the operations here at the Graham, not least of which include valuable contributions to the bibliography that accompanies this exhibition in the bookshop. She will be missed, but we wish her well. So with that said, please take advantage of 10% off everything in the bookshop tonight. <laughs> Say farewell to Zoe, and please help me welcome Torquese Dyson, who will introduce Christina Sharp. Thank you for all for being here. Thank you, Ellen. So in lieu of the introduction, um, which um, so much information can be found on myself and Christina in uh, both the handouts online and um, various places, what we wanted to kind of do um, to sort of get started and jump in mm -hmm. and say that uh, we met maybe about two years ago and at the University of Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania mm -hmm. um, at a sort of round table of thinkers, artists, makers 
um, that was started by Don Lundy Martin and Rich Blint called Unruly uh, Collaborations. So this is maybe our fourth or fifth, what, this is our second sort our of second conversation. Yeah, on except record. That um, except that we actually only met a year ago. It just oh, seems it? like oh, it's been, <laughs> it feels like we've been in conversation for, yes. for some time. Yes, yeah. yes, it does. So um, that's what sort of where we wanted to begin. Yeah. Um, we had a conversation at the Drawing Center less than six months ago. Right where um, Christina came to New York. Uh, we sat down and talked about her work and we talked about my work. And what has been happening over these conversations is that I keep revisiting um, in the wake and discovering towards form, um, what am I doing as an abstract painter? What am I doing as a person who's interested in environmental science and social issues and political issues and economies. And every time I revisit this book, I sort of revisit my own mark making. I revisit my own line work. I revisit my own you know, relationship to the picture plane, to the three-dimensional object. And where I am now in uh, this conversation with Christina and her, the breadth of her work and our conversations is thinking about the haptic, thinking about the things that I can touch, I can form, that um, both with uh, materials like clay and wood, with materials such as graphite and gouache, how do I use my hands to do wake work, um, which I'm coming to you know, uh, have the language for. And um, I think that we can sort of start there, me trying to live up to what is, I consider, wake work. Hmm. So um, thank you. And I'm going to start with a little introduction first, and mm -hmm. then we'll come to, to have a conversation. So um, as I told Terquasse, um, really I've been thinking about her work really almost every day since um, we had that conversation in March at the Graham Foundation. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not sorry, at the Graham Foundation, at the Drawing Center. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about your practice and your profound grappling with blackness and abstraction, with excess, pivot, air, breath, etc. And your work has really um, enriched my thinking about those things. So I'm working on a project currently called Black Period, Still Period, Life Period. And um, mm -hmm. Terpasse's work has become central to that work in thinking about both stillness and, and motion, um, breath, because your work has so much breath in it, it seems to me, so much air. Um, and I taught a, a graduate and an undergraduate class this past semester called uh, Imagining Slavery and Freedom. And your work, Saidia's work, Marissa Fuentes, Michel Rovtrio, Dion Brand, Fred Dagar, John Keane and yourself were so central to that class and the kinds of ways um, about thinking about what, what we are called on, how we are stretched to you know, imagine freedom, um, imagine liberation, um, imagine you know, otherwise. And so I wanted to continue to think with you about something that you said that night at the drawing center, and I'm and I'm I i do not remember if you said it in the public conversation, but you but we certain you said it certainly to me before the conversation, mm. and you said the shape makes the black, mm. um, and so I wanted to think with you about that some mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. I guess you talk about you know make mark making and line work, and mm -hmm. black, what you call black compositional thought. Mm -hmm. How does the shape make mm -hmm. the black? and make the black otherwise. Yeah, right. So um, I think we were in the back room and we, we were. were looking at, yeah. at the drawing center, um, this, this system of drawings that I'd made, and there were 100 at the time. Mm -hmm. Downstairs, there are 210. And oftentimes, when we're having a conversation, I, um, and a, lot of, a lot of the work and the making is improvisational. And I find myself, when speaking with Christina, mm -hmm. thinking through and um, language becoming as we're talking, and uh, I think it was the first time I'd said that out loud, yeah. um, the shapes that make the black, and to think about these shapes that I have um, decided um, were my equation, and that is the curve, that is the rectangle, and that is the irregular triangle. 
that um, are in relationship to these uh, moments in history of self-emancipation, thinking about Box Brown, thinking about Har Harriet Jacobs, and thinking about um, Anthony Burns. So through these narratives, I've sort of extracted these um, shapes. Um, and in the work, I know and understand that as I am making, as I am drawing, as I am painting, these are the shapes that made them, these are the shapes that make me. Um, when I think about the curve, not only do I think about the whole, the hull which you and Sadia talk about very graciously as uh, spaces of radicality and um, moments of um, collaboration, potential emancipation, and looking forward, planning. And um, I'm thinking about those shapes as, yeah, a kind of black compositional thought where how do we move our bodies towards liberation, towards um, emancipatory actions? And we're thinking about, as you said, how do we pivot the body? How do we move the body through a landscape? How do we think about geographic sites, cities, um, the connection between city and urban areas, and connection between these kind of histories that I'm sort of clawing my way back to, um, to think about them otherwise, right, in relationship to how I learned about them pictorially in terms of a certain system of representation. How do I use this shape? How do I use this um, act of drawing to think about those histories otherwise, right? To think about not as, um, to get close to these histories, not to, as a way of representing these histories, but to get close to these histories as a way of forming their sort of spatial strategies um, and thinking about their spatial strategies and connecting, in my mind, to these sort of spatial strategies that we will need um, in the future. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really uh, a, a, an important part for me, is connecting to the spatial strategies that we need, will need in the future and that we need in the present. Mm -hmm. um, yes, the now. Mm -hmm. And so I was also thinking about the ways in which you, um, I was thinking again still about sort of um, composition and care. Mm -hmm. um, I think when you're talking about um, some of the painting, the strange fruit paintings, mm -hmm. um, you talk about mm -hmm. painting them um, sort of over time. Mm -hmm and trying to work with care and composition from end to end, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think from, 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 um, from space to space. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was thinking about um, sort of, I don't know, something about time mm -hmm. in your work. Mm -hmm. um, time and building and how that, and how that works. <coughs> um, mm -hmm. Do you want to say anything about time? Sure. I've <laughs> And I will connect it to um, one of the, the chapters that I'm sort of currently rethinking, diving back into, is Christina's chapter titled The Weather. And thinking about um, the weather black and blackness as a condition of the overall, as a condition of the everywhere and the everything. And when I understand that to be true, and I absolutely do, I think about the condition or atmosphere of the history of lynching, and I think about the painting and the painting surface of it, overallness um, of the application of paint, the application of mark over time. So it becomes this, um, this sort of motion of making that is about the monastic, that is about the slowing down and caring of the understanding of um, the weather, um, that was consistently anti-black to its death, right? So the, the series uh, Strange Fruit are, ab are about me thinking about the landscape of it all, not um, particularly individual acts of horror and terror, but to understand or think about um, the sort of temperature it meant to be under that kind of terror in the face of um, simply asking a question, or walking down the street and that's because I think right, he, she, and she, he. Mm. You're focusing on your a couple, a couple mm -hmm. right? And the man is, the man is lynched for asking to be paid, mm -hmm. and the woman is lynched after going to look for him, and mm -hmm. she's six months pregnant, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so I, you know, uh, you know, I've said, and you can tell me I'm wrong, mm -hmm. um, that that part of the way that I think about those paintings as well is a kind of heat map, mm. that it's that it's 
so that there's a way in which it's the overallness, mm -hmm. but that if we also think about the, the sort of individual stories that mm -hmm. you're thinking about, mm -hmm. I kept thinking about it as a kind of movement of, as a kind of markers of where they moved individually and together mm -hmm. over time, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, the, and the kind of atmospheric trace mm -hmm. that they leave in the environment, the mm -hmm. way that they change the environment, the mm -hmm. way the environment changed them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that's so um, you know, generous about, about your work. Mm -hmm is that you're not interested in sort of the reproduction of the brutalized body of the black person. And that's not the point of view you give us in the Strange Fruit series. It is something else about, if we're thinking about environments and the overallness, it is about the terror, but it's also about what gets made in that terror. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me like, what, what is an excess of that terror? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm particularly interested in, in those two works or what happens, but what was the atmosphere before the terror, yes. right? What does it mean to be in love and be loved? And what was that household like, right, for so that you, couple? I, and I've heard you say before that you're interested in breath and lips. Yes, right? yes. So, the, the so kissing, I kept thinking right. about that, right? Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like Absolutely. This is a spot where they kissed and then, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Intimacy, interiority, deep interiority, deep love, deep intimacy, slowing down and being in the now, right? Mm -hmm. So those paintings are not at, at, um, at their, um, if I can say this, at their essence, um, are sort of my monastic practice around getting to that breath, to that kiss, to that warm space between those two, right? And to think about um, and honor um, that kind of moment where I, a live body now, can make these paintings and to make them in relationship to time and time passing and really slowing things down. Mm -hmm. And to think about the ways in which simultaneously I know nothing about their intimacy, right? right? So um, this is a sort of um, affirmation, maybe a proclamation of something I don't even know. Well, I mean, I kept thinking, I keep thinking about those paintings as also a kind of enactment of what Hartman calls critical fabulation, mm, right? Mm, so that mm. you know the bare details mm -hmm. of their lives. And this is another way mm -hmm. of kind of Absolutely. forming mm -hmm. those, those, you know, a kind of building. So mm -hmm. I think about the building as, you know, mm -hmm. the way Hartman, you know, uses mm -hmm. like, or, or, mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or, or. Mm -hmm. I think of that, the, that, those paintings as a building of like, mm -hmm. or this happened, mm -hmm. or this, or mm -hmm. this, or this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but the, acknowledge the acknowledgement that there are lives mm -hmm. and things happened in lives mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they may go multiple mm -hmm. directions. That, that, um, that critical fabulation is where I find grace, right? And where I find n necessary this, this idea that you put forth to me, this idea of the otherwise. Mm -hmm. So it is in that moment of critical fabulation that I can begin to think about the otherwise, right? I can begin to revisit and think and think through what does it mean to have those histories of intimacy and know that those productions of intimacy can absolutely happen now in the weather of anti-blackness now. So what does it mean to both trans, um, you know, make these paintings in these moments, thinking about the rectangle and thinking about the page and understanding that I can be an atmosphere um, of fabulation, you know, in, in my own way, right? I can produce an atmosphere of fabulation in my own way within the picture plane. Mm -hmm. So. Um, well, I'm going to read something to you. Okay. So, um, because I kept, so I taught Fred Dagar's Feeding the Ghosts this semester twice. Oh. And um, that's such an, uh, uh, if you haven't read it, it's an amazing novel. Um, in which we stay uh, in the hold of the ship for the first longest third of the book, and the ship is the Zong. So um, I kept texting to Akwasa, you have to read this book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna read you just a very, a little bit. So to go back to what I'd said about um, you talking about the shape makes the black, and you had talked about you know, the shape, the circle, mm -hmm. the circle of the shackle, the circle of the, mm -hmm. the neck, mm -hmm. the, color, mm -hmm. um, the circle, you said, of that um, porthole in that ship mm -hmm. over which, of, out through which 132 Africans, mm -hmm. living Africans, were thrown overboard. Mm -hmm. um, and as we know, one, uh, I think there were 133, one person climbs back mm -hmm. on board. Mm -hmm. That person is a man. Fred mm -hmm. Degard turns that man mm -hmm. into a woman, and her name is Minta. 
Um, and so it seemed to me that the kind of ab abstraction that you're talking about is also something that Degar explores in Feeding the Ghosts through Minta's relationship to wood and mm -hmm. grain. So her mm -hmm. father works with wood. She learns a language of wood. Mm -hmm. And so she recounts her crawling back onto the slave ship after throwing, being thrown overboard in this way, quote, grain emerged from wood, plaited into a rope, and offered itself to me. And I gripped it and kept my hold on that grain. I climbed up the side of that ship. Mm. I don't know that I want. I don't know what I, I want you to say, except that you know I thought that your work is deeply in conversation mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I look mm -hmm. at the 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 two large works, longitude and latitude mm -hmm. of this site, mm -hmm. and the use of the black yarn, mm -hmm. which as you say is made of cotton, mm -hmm. and thinking about you know that mm -hmm. that fiber, that what yeah. that allows. Yeah, no, I, um, when I think about um, the unnamed man crawling back into the hole, mm -hmm. crawling back into the hole, crawling back into the hole, and here we go, fabulation, the touch, the haptic, like what does it mean to, in the slippery wetness of the boat, in the slippery wetness of the water line, against the pressure of movement, against the pressure of his own body. So the, the physicality of that um, architecture, the ship architecture itself, mm -hmm. in relationship um, to the breath, breathless matter of um, this individual crawling through this hole, um, thinking about, you know, in the work, I think about pressure, I think about distance, I think about pulling things tightly. And I can't imagine um, what that may have been like, but for me, um, imaging in, in, in imaging, as you talk about imaging in your book in particular, um, sort of thinking about the round, thinking about geometry in that way, and thinking about how that shape allowed a kind of something that I can't even fathom as a diver myself, I can't even fathom that kind of moment. But also connecting that moment to Box Brown making the hole, right? Yeah. And Harriet Jake is making the hole. Yeah. And understanding that the wood, the touch, the grain, um, the materiality of the self-emancipation, right, mm -hmm. is constant, right? Yes. And to mm -hmm. think about what it means to have make work in relationship to that materiality, the rope, the knot, the, the dragging, the pressing, the um, while thinking about spatiality, right? So mm -hmm. there was a moment where he's in the hold, right? And then he's out in this vast water, then he's back in, right? Yes. What about time in that way, yeah. right? And these are things that I'm just t trying to think about in, in terms of making um, objects that keep me in relationship to those considerable, keep me in relationship mm -hmm. to considering that, that time and space and objectness, right? So then the work becomes a way that I, am, you know, I, I, I bind myself to these histories to get at an otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. And to get at a sort of um, understanding of uh, the critical m moment of the now, the then, the, the future, the, uh, the, the kind of understanding of senses and sensoria um, around these histories that I, I think are paid so little attention to, um, sort of black sensoria, the haptic, and what, mm. how we, you know, how, know. Yeah, how we know, you know, how we know through touch and feeling and, yeah. you know, um, so thinking and immediacy. You know, and the improvisa improvisation. Mm -hmm. You know, those are kind of immediate acts, right? Mm -hmm. How do I get, I'm off, I'm back on, I'm mm. in the wake, I'm in the physical wake yeah. of the water, the pressure, like what does that mean to operate and acknowledge that kind of existence? Which is also an existence of urgency. Oh yes, right? absolutely. Yeah. So. Absolutely. And that urgency, I, I think I mentioned this several times in some of my talks, but post-Katrina, in my apartment in Atlanta, my urgency was I had 40 of my friends on, on, in my apartment, you yeah. know? And so this idea of, and, and not at all, at all to compare the two, but this kind of, um, what does it happen when you're, you're living your life as an artist and mm -hmm. you're working around these sort of larger meta ideas around environmental justice and um, climate change and global warming and liberation and all these things, and then one day, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, I am feeding 40 people. I right. am betting, you know, kind of in this spatial way, um, 
people that I love and their friends and their friends' friends. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a connectivity, you know, that meters, you know, it, it doesn't have the same terror, it doesn't have the same agency, but it definitely um, hits my heart in a way that forces me, keeps forcing me to make work. And it makes me think about, right, so the kinds of logics involved in thinking mm. about, about mm. sort of movement, um, mm. numbers of people. So, you know, you've said a couple things to me that I probably will repeat uh, every time we have a public conversation, but, um, but that I keep thinking about and I don't have answers for. Right? Like when, when you said, how many corners are in this room? Oh, and sort right. of thinking about how one even, you know, right. I was only looking at the ceiling, but of course there are the corners of the floor, there are corners of the window, so sort of how do you, yeah. yeah, and then how do you, and you said, so you said something about like, what kind of shape would you need to move 500 people quickly? Mm -hmm. um, and so those kinds of things, like, so what kind of space would you need to, you know, mm -hmm. house 40 people mm -hmm. in an emergency? Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, of course these really are things that, again, in our present, Mm -hmm. that we have to think about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what, you know, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think about um, the shape that we may need to move and think, thinking about um, what it means to, and I'll, and I'll move us to the idea of infrastructure and architecture, mm -hmm. the shapes that force us to move, yes. right? The shapes that force us to invent new shapes mm -hmm where we must move, right? So thinking about the levees in particular, these sort of curved shape, thinking about dams, thinking about underdeveloped infrastructures that move, um, you know, steadily as the earth moves steadily, you know, cracking and toiling with um, water, water pressures that are constantly in flux, mm -hmm. right? So this idea of the shapes that already exist in our overdeveloped condition that then define uh, through their underdevelopment how we would then move, right? And what mm -hmm. shapes mm -hmm. need to be invented, created, uh, made on the spot improvisationally yeah. that allow us to survive these kinds of conditions, right? So this idea of um, sh shapes that I find, shapes mm -hmm. that we inherit mm -hmm. um, as spatial conditions, as infrastructural conditions, architectures that we inherit, mm -hmm. architectures that we produce mm -hmm. because of these new conditions. So each time I'm in a room, I'm very mm -hmm. aware um, of the kind of you know, architectural space it is. Are we in the round, right? Mm -hmm. Are we in something in the 90 degree? Where's the window? Where's the outlet? Where's the floor? Where's the door? What are these things made of? Um, so as I'm thinking about the work, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about how do we, how do I create sculptures that um, are about the amalgamation of this thought, right? Mm -hmm. Not towards a representation of a box or a square, but how do I create an amalgamation that considers this, um, both the potential of the, the, the haptic and the objectness of a sculptural piece, but also the motion, the move, the standing of something still with the potential energy of the stream, mm -hmm. right? So how does sculpture, um, and the sculpture in this building in particular, talk about like distance and pulling and pressure, mm -hmm. why talking about sort of weight and mass mm -hmm. and how those things are in the constant state change because of the sort of environmental conditions that we are or in and how do I think about blackness through all of those state changes, right? right? right. Um, so, you know, here, here we are back to your work thinking about I am trying to consider what it means to not only think about atmosphere in the scientific way, mm -hmm. but the atmosphere of belonging to each other, right? Yes. The atmosphere of needing to look to each other um, for architectural and infrastructural resources mm -hmm. and to continue this, um, this grace in becoming and belonging to each other over and over again in this atmosphere of anti-blackness. Yeah. Right. We have to remind yeah. ourselves yeah. that we belong to ourselves. Yeah. Right. You know, as I, um, you know, I said this to you yesterday that as I um, sort of looking, looking through, looking at all of the hyper shapes again, mm -hmm. and sort of thinking about your work. As I said, I've been thinking about your work a lot. I, I, I had a, a PhD student years ago who started on, who started working on a dissertation called "Looking Laterally," mm -hmm. and you know, I said, you know. 
Uh, and I had said to him what a, what a beautiful title that was, mm -hmm. looking laterally. And so thinking about, he changed his dissertation title, but, <laughs> but, but, but thinking about what, what it might mean really to look laterally, mm -hmm. um, which is what I was trying to think about when I was talking, thinking about various uh, ideas mm -hmm. of care, mm -hmm. right? To, to not look you know, vertically, mm -hmm. um, and even sort of laterally it seemed to be different than horizontally. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm a different kind of relation. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was thinking about sort of perpendicular vision. So mm -hmm. if we think about you know, mm -hmm. what kind of sight we need, what is it to sort of sight from the position of the board mm -hmm. in the hull? Mm -hmm. Or, um, yeah, so what, what, you know, which is, a, a, I don't really know what I'm asking, but I feel like that your work is trying to, is grounding me in um, a different kind of materiality, mm -hmm. right? So what is it to look from that position and be unable to get up from that position? Mm -hmm. what, how do you imagine your world? What, what do you need to think yourself to freedom? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I think I'm, I'm bound to that question, yeah. right? My, my practice is just bound to that to that question and working through um, that question with as, as many forms that get me, or may, uh, allow me to feel closer to some kind of comprehension of it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I don't have an answer either, yeah. <laughs> but I know that um, what it means to make and what it means to make work um, not, in, not always mm, from, different positions, from a scalar position, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Looking out in space and what material means, but what also distance means, mm -hmm. um, and what, how to embody these things. And I mean embody them, meaning think about these historical narratives, thinking about these present day conditions, thinking about modes of refusal. So mm -hmm. when, I mean, when I say embody, I mean consider both my um, sort of first person experience mm -hmm. and um, a sort of propositional experience that I understand um, um, from different modes of resistance that I, weren't, I was not part of physically, but mm -hmm. I understand the ethos of. Mm -hmm. So, you know, embodiment in this way, well, how do I push the form forward? How do I know to stay in the moment of the piece? How do I know to stay in the moment of um, this idea of tonality and color and mm -hmm. um, shade, right? What does it mean to work through uh, the blues, the reds, the oranges to get to a kind of shaded uh, space where there's plenty and, and uh, a sort of engulfment of light, where there's radiation um, through uh, a gradient form, right? Mm -hmm. So what am I trying to um, um, kind of convey uh, to the to to the viewers, yeah, right? Yeah, right? About gradient, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to convey a, a potential of light, a potential of seeing mm -hmm. um, in front of you, mm -hmm. right? Being present but seeing in front of you, mm -hmm. and the kind of spatial conditions that um, I think uh, black people, poor people, people under um, you know all kind of uh, systemic orders of degradation have had to do in the past, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So um, I have to I. I want to bring up a couple of questions mm -hmm. um, that your work um, sort of pushes me back into, and I've just written them down in thinking about mm -hmm. um, this idea of the lateral, this mm -hmm. idea of the hyper shape. Um, and I think it's a healthy question uh, that I ask myself in, in finding form, what am I forming? Yeah. Like, what am I forming, one? Yeah. Right? Um, what is bound to appear, Huey Copeland? What is bound yeah. to appear? through this form I'm making, mm -hmm. through painting and sculpture and drawing and video and our, and our video work together, right? Yeah. Um, another question, uh, let's see if I can read my writing. Um, <laughs> Wanna borrow my glasses? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, oh, if I am, if I form to image the otherwise, mm -hmm. right? Um, what will that otherwise then tell me anew? 
yeah. right? So how yeah. do I stay with the discipline mm -hmm. um, of making and inventing and thinking about spatiality mm -hmm. to get to an otherwise that will tell me anew that is useful and helpful, right? Yeah. So not just sit yeah, yeah. in the otherwise of abstraction, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. be in a space of criticality. Is that otherwise distant enough? Is it vast enough? Or does it just lock me into um, a kind of palatable, um, um, consumption of something I already know, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do I get to that otherwise? That's a critical otherwise, and mm -hmm. we talked with Dion about this, but otherwise about real kind of liberation in the face mm -hmm. of these histories, mm -hmm. right? So can you talk about... Um... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it actually makes me want to ask you something else, and not to avoid talking about it, not to avoid talking about it, but it actually makes me want to ask you to put the, the water table back up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Because, oh, yes, because I've titled this. Otherwise. Because you've talked. Because you've yes. titled this. Yes. This was after the after our conversation okay. and after our conversation on otherwise. And I think after, I think this is this is after the Whitney. Okay. So this was after this is Raymond. After the, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is after Raymond. So this is called w w otherwise, otherwise Water Table. Yes. So. And so it bears a relation mm -hmm. to the other water table. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But then the. The shapes are there. The shapes are mm -hmm, there, mm -hmm. and these kind of shard, mm -hmm. like shards, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so if you were to sort of think your question in relation to this work, what did mm. this, what did this allow you? And so I'll, I'll, I won't, I'm not going to try to evade <laughs> and avoid the question. Oh, so goodness. if I think about, if I think about questions of form, um, and, the, and sort of what I wanted to do in terms of form, and why, partially why I began in the register of the autobiographical, for a number mm. of reasons, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm thinking about it in terms of the auto-theoretical, mm. and also because it was, a, it was a, as I've said before, like an ethical decision that I'm sitting in the midst of these, you know, multiple personal losses of my own in the midst of sort of documenting and thinking about and writing about mm -hmm. all kinds of loss of mm -hmm. black people globally, mm -hmm. whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, being forced, mm -hmm. you know, to, tra to migrate across mm -hmm. um, the, the African continent, whether it's being forced to migrate across the Atlantic Ocean or the Mediterranean, et cetera, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I've been thinking about those kinds of things, the ways in which, to use Ronaldo Walcott's words, um, the ways in which black people's movement is interdicted in all mm. these sites in mm. North America, South America, everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so I was thinking about the kind of form that would allow me to attend to not only the kinds of pressures on black life that mm -hmm. lead to the extinguishing Mm -hmm. of black life, mm -hmm. but the, what is also an excess of that? Mm -hmm. And so what would be um, an appropriate form? Mm -hmm. And that might mean that you need several different kinds of forms. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so thinking about that in relation to your work, like you saying that if you look at the hypershapes that are downstairs, some of the elements that you said that were central to the hypershape, the irregular triangle, mm -hmm. the rectangle, mm -hmm. and the line, mm -hmm. There are other shapes there too, mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. some sort of pressure and necessity mm -hmm. has also produced a shift in the elements of the hypershape. So, you know, uh, what 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 do we learn from what necessity um, and a desire to make something visible um, and the urgency with which you feel that you must make something visible? So, what what do you know differently in that making? Um, right. 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 Did that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, and maybe it's no, not really a question no, to answer. Just, maybe it's just a place just... to. Maybe it's just a place to end. <laughs> right. That that what we do know differently in that making. You well, know? no. I I think that um, I want to read something from Christina's book quite right quick. Um, <sighs> In what I am calling the weather, anti-blackness is pervasive as, as climate. The weather necessitates, necessitates changeability and improvisation. It is the atmosphere condition of time and place. It produces new ecologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that production, right? Right. Um, exactly. I, I feel like we, you ask, I make, you ask, I make, and we're doing it in this way yeah. where it, it, it leads to... Um, a kind of new ecologies and new information, yeah. mm -hmm. but also a true sense of um, 
what does it mean when everything belongs to everything else? Yeah. Right? Where it's a, um, all of these networks are connected. They're um, a kind of, um, the word escapes me. I apologize. I'll go, I'll go back to it. Um, but a, a sort of everythingness mm -hmm. where, you know, atmospheric condition of time and place, they are indelibly tied through our words, through our emotions, through our movements. And for me, as a painter, as someone who makes um, objects that live in the world, the, the excess is not only um, the object that uh, appears before, but it is also the making. So the, the, mm. the, 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 the content of the hypershape exercise, which is on the second floor, the content is also um, the pressure that I have as a body making a thing. So yeah. the repetition, the insistent around form and shape, the idea that under kind of, um, and this is very much um, an exercise that I relate to musicians often, I have uh, an ambition to tune composition, the same um, or likely uh, a composition, a strategy, a, um, a kind of um, um, plan to associate me with both um, thinkers, some my ancestors, music, thinking about the way in which Ida B. Wells, the strategy of refusal, the strategy of writing, the strategy of moving her body through different geographies, writing, asking questions over and over again, the strategy of Winter's work where she is absolutely not talking about a singular site but everywhere all the time and how those things transverse space and building these ecologies, um, you know, drawing after drawing after drawing mm -hmm. and letting in improvisation and not being held to a kind of full emotional rapture of this history but pulling myself in from the discipline of emotion to a sort of um, cognitive knowing about uh, perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to tune both improvisation um, within the picture plane, also tune a kind of technique around perspective drawing and the nature of um, the hinge in an architectural moment, but let these things sort of fuse um, a kind of pictorial space that's truer mm -hmm. to this notion of changeability, improvisation, mm -hmm. and the otherwise, yeah. right? So to put myself under um, a kind of pictorial pressure, um, knowing mm -hmm. that there is a now, there is a, um, a coming of um, different climates that are absolutely, um, that I relate to um, both uh, the transatlantic slave trade, the East African trade, slave trade, that all have to do with um, um, land and body and extraction. So that is the practice um, of tuning, right? Composition and to allow um, both what it means to think about, um, we talked about this before, Dix, Dixon's work on like slow, vi slow violence mm -hmm. up against like fast violence, <laughs> but also in um, moments where we are solving problems, mm -hmm. you know, that talk about like grace and belonging and beauty. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those sol solving towards beauty takes a long time. Yeah. And sometimes it takes a, a short amount of time. But like solving towards um, uh, beauty and grace and peace mm -hmm. in the picture plane, it, 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 I think it's a compositional condition also. I've told you this before, but as soon as you start introducing mathematical terms like solving, I feel <laughs> I feel <Right>. overwhelmed. <laughs> she right. goes, I almost failed geometry, you know. So, right, um, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, that's so funny. <laughs> it's or, true. Or something so like funny. switches in my brain. I think solving. Oh my god. Solving. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, but 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 you know we are. We're sort of you know. Um, I used to have a conversations with a friend all the time about there's some part of your brain that's always trying to work out a problem, mm -hmm. right? So that when you sit down to write or you mm -hmm. sit down or you or you begin to, to paint something, mm -hmm. there's some part of your brain that gets activated that's already been activated mm -hmm. and has mm -hmm. been activated all along, mm -hmm. but you, you know, mm -hmm. so, it, so yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but there was something else I was going to say to you that I was thinking about. Oh, you, when you were talking about the marking the mark um, mm. and the line, um, toward, you know, imagining something else, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, of course, uh, the, what came back to me again is that moment in Beloved when Setha says, mm. mark the mark on me too. Mm. Mm. And it just made me rethink what marking that mark might be. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so Setha, you know, for a number of reasons as a child, thinks that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mark by which her mother will know her. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't believe that she's already marked, but mm -hmm. of course she is, is because that absolutely. mark is the mark of mm -hmm. blackness, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but how that mark mm -hmm. is not can be a mark toward, um, mm -hmm. mm. yeah, toward liberation. Mm -hmm. Because uh, for all of the people who, for say, Burns, for Burns, Jacobs, uh, Henry mm. Box Brown, mm -hmm. like these are people who have had to imagine themselves into, well, I'll use Douglas's word, comparative freedom mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. from absolute unfreedom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that that sort of tension, that sort of leap, that mm -hmm. um, stretch, mm -hmm. that. Um, work of mm -hmm. material work as well as imaginative work um, is something that I, I, I think um, I, I see um, in your work. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to read your work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, okay, I'll read a little bit of it. I am interested in ways of seeing and imagining responses to Zotera visited on black life and the ways we inhabit it are inhabited by it and refuse it. Mm -hmm. I am interested in the ways we live in and despite Tara. By considering that relationship between imaging and imagining in the register of black annotation and black redaction, mm -hmm. I want to think about what these images call forth. Yeah. I, want to think of, I want to think through what they call on us to do, think, feel in the wake of slavery which is to say, in an, end, in an ongoing present of subjection and resistance. What is that to be, what is that in my mind? Mm -hmm. I, write, I write in the book, um, what does it mean to call forth, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to, and for me as a painter, what does it mean to bring forth, yeah. right, these images? What am I calling into? Mm -hmm. What am I calling from? What are these, you know, objects that we're looking at um, do. Mm -hmm. And with Setha and the way in which you approach Beloved, and I read Beloved at Tougaloo College, <laughs> Tougaloo, Mississippi, where I was safe yeah. on that campus, right? And I understood um, the work of Setha and, um, mm. and Denver. But as I returned to the weather, reading it again, mm -hmm. and thinking about Setha keeping Denver away from the atmosphere, mm -hmm. right? Away from the anti-blackness and what that does, mm -hmm. right? But Setha understanding in that architectural space of that home, you're talking yes. about the wood, the sink, the floor, mm -hmm. the stairs, the color, right? Yeah. In my mind, the way in which Morrison talks about it, it's these constant throughways, mm -hmm. right? It's the outside, the outside, yeah. it's the inside, mm -hmm. it's this sort of deep interiority, and then there's the mark. Yeah. The mark kind of pivots us around what does it mean to understand but not completely understand, mm -hmm. to say something, and um, as my friend uh, um, um, Nate talks about, there's so many things that I don't want to say. Right, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to say because I don't want to say them. Yeah, but they still the marks still exist. Oh, absolutely, right. right? So, so that so that Setha can imagine, mm -hmm. you know, that she is protecting Denver mm -hmm. by not allowing her mm -hmm. by sort of keeping her encircled. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but you know that that creates all these other mm -hmm. right. The thing that you don't know doesn't mm -hmm. protect you mm -hmm. from from the violence. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. simply unprepares you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't prepare mm -hmm. you for the mm -hmm. violence, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the recovery that Denver has to do. Yeah. So she has to manage a kind of simultane a simultaneous recovery for her mother, yes. right? Yeah. So she gathers, yeah. she heals Denver, yes. right? The one that was in mm -hmm. the hold yeah. the entire time. Yeah, yeah. Let out, forced out, mm -hmm. allowed herself out, then comes up with these strategies around care yes. and instinct and yes. love mm -hmm. in the face of her own the terror that her sister brings, right? right. To, to, right. A, to a certain extent. Right. But when when you write about what does it mean to call forth, yeah. I'm thinking what about that. To do. Mm -hmm. what, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think I can only do that as a painter through constant repetition. I can only mm -hmm. do that mm -hmm. through 
a kind of condition of force and pressure, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I'm interested in the way you think about time mm -hmm. and atmosphere, mm -hmm. uh, wake work, mm -hmm. and um, the sort of waters between us and yeah. how you think about you know, form. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank you for this book. <laughs> And uh, I'm sure a lot of us in this room want to thank you for uh, in the wake. Um, can you talk? Can you talk about? Um, if, or you can talk about the new work. I think you're a genius. Here we go. <laughs> Wherever you want to enter, <laughs> no, I, well, is all right you. with me. Um, um, well, I was um, you said something about form and atmosphere, and um, maybe I'll talk a little bit about the new work too. I okay. Don't know. Yes. Please. which is very in its very early stages mm -hmm. um, but I you know in, in talking about residence time sort of mm -hmm. what continues mm -hmm. right and I wanted to mm -hmm. think about well what continues mm -hmm. in terms of soil mm -hmm. right so that if we're thinking about if we're thinking about lynching um, and so I started thinking about the equal justice initiative soil collection project mm -hmm. um, which I think is a kind of abstraction of the violence of lynching but it's an abstraction that doesn't refuse that there was violence mm -hmm. it's an abstraction that refuses to recirculate the violated body the brutalized body of mm -hmm. the black person and then I started thinking about um, mm -hmm. your strange fruit mm -hmm. um, and questions of, of abstraction and trying to get at so that the EJI is about the aftermath, mm -hmm. right? The soil from the approximate place where the person was murdered, um, collected, the despised, handled with care. Mm -hmm. Yours is also trying to imagine a before the violence, mm -hmm. um, lives lived before the onset of white violence and white riots in the form of lynching, mm -hmm. um, of mass mm -hmm. murder. Um, so I wanted to think those two projects, that aspect of the EJI project and your project together in order to think about, about a certain kind of care. Mm -hmm. You, as I said, you talk about sort of composition, building up, building up a canvas or building up material over time, mm -hmm. you know, with graphite mm -hmm. and paint mm -hmm. and um, the, the sort of netting and mm -hmm. fiber mm -hmm. um, and what that takes, mm -hmm. right, to sort of, and that seemed to me the same way that you know, one could build a narrative life, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, except that, that I think in trying to tell a narrative about lynching, mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I don't think that narratives about black life land in the way that, say, Stevenson wants them to, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, because he mm -hmm. says, you know, with the EJI, he wants a narrative that will take you from, you know, slavery mm -hmm. or capture Mm -hmm. kidnapping um, into the present that will work the way the, the ki a kind of narrative of a Holocaust museum works, mm -hmm. or the Holocaust museum works. And, and you get a kind of, you know, a grand history of moving from suffering into something else, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but I know that um, Dion will talk more about, about narrative, mm -hmm. but I think that um, part of what you do is, um, again, I think this, the, the sort of question of the or, Mm -hmm. um, and the question of a multiplicity, mm -hmm. and the question of um, you know attending to what you might not know the specifics of a life, but you know that there was a life, mm -hmm. and that people were living, mm -hmm. um, and that may sound quite basic, but we don't often get to occupy a life, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, so where am I going with that? Um, so yeah, so I really wanted to think about you know. Um, the, both the stillness of the work but also the movement of the work. So I was saying before that if you look at some of the hyper shapes or some of the, or, or some of the other paintings, mm -hmm. right, like the water table paintings, and I'm not sure if this one that you see them, but there are, I know very little about, I don't know technical terms for drawing or many things, <laughs> but, but I'm thinking like I've ever, if you've ever played in one of those, um, like the, or done any work in like Adobe Photoshop or something, there are those, I don't know what you call them, those like sort of gradient lines where you can move something, and so those elements appear in the work, mm -hmm. and so that even as they're still, there's always the, mm -hmm. the possibility of movement. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I guess I see, like those lines have been shifted, right? Um, mm -hmm. And something has also broken. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, and so that this painting could almost be a collage, mm -hmm. 
right? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it in person, so I don't know. I don't know what it looks like mm -hmm. in person. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, uh, and so part of this sort of thinking about 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 stillness, mm -hmm. um, as in duration, but mm -hmm. also as in non movement or barely discernible movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also mm -hmm. thinking about your work. Right. So I was just recent. I was recently in Berlin for a conference called um, Performances of Nothingness, and I saw Nick Kay perform. Um, mm. God. Now what's the what's the work? Now all of a sudden I can't remember the name of the work. Nick Kay is brilliant though. Yeah. So I saw Nick Kay perform uh, mm -hmm. Push It. Push It. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I also saw um, Okwi Okpo Wasili perform like 30 minutes of Bronx Gothic. Mm -hmm. And sort of thinking mm -hmm. about that mm -hmm. um, both, um, I don't know, the duration of those mm -hmm. performances. Mm -hmm the tension of those performances. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to think about that too and mm -hmm. trying to think about that with your work. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've answered your question, mm -hmm. but, but that's part of what your work is pushing me to think about and part of what mm -hmm. I'm trying to contend with. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, you know, when you talk about in your work, um, the ways in which, um, can, we, can we talk about Brad? Sure. Okay. So one of the one of my more, more recent paintings after our, our conversation, I um, titled "I Can't Breathe," mm -hmm. and uh, with the Eric Garner murder, mm -hmm. I was initially I made a piece with, that was thinking about the sort of infrastructure of cement mm -hmm. in relationship to you know city engineering and what does it mean to have a zone in relationship to a, um, a form, and this is, this is a kind of way, um, I'll say, mm, Tony Smith thinks about the minimal, like what is, what is the object in relationship to the body, mm -hmm. right? And what is this material in real time, how is it related to a torso, or how is it related to a shoulder, how is it related to space in the round, right? So in that way, I was thinking about um, Garner's space of death, right? Mm -hmm. And space of murder, right? And space of force without breath. Mm -hmm. And the way in which you call into the history of profile and profiling black bodies in relationship to breath and lung capacity. Right, I was thinking and, of Lund using Lundy Braun's work, right? Oh, right, yeah. right, right. So in my mind, thinking about your work in relationship to the breath and space and material, mm -hmm. and to understand uh, what does it mean to um, be known as a people who have a, 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 a sort of by, mm -hmm. by our own existence, mm -hmm. uh, we have a lesser capacity to breathe. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. we have um, a, a, a breath is less accountable mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. And for me, thinking about and, and breath in relationship uh, to black murder, black death, yeah. and relationship to the liquid grave, right, yes. that you talk about. Yes. So what does it mean to have breath stolen, taken, forced mm -hmm. out of you? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be pushed overboard and struggle mm -hmm. for breath? Mm -hmm. And what does it mean to think about yeah. air as it is changing, atmosphere is changing, mm -hmm. um, because of recent c climate change issues and, you know, real environmental um, kind of conditions where mm -hmm. over time mm -hmm. the the air that we breathe is killing us. And the fact so. that, you know, young, young black people have, you know, these you know, esque rates of asthma that are getting higher yes. and higher and mm -hmm. higher, mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. as well as, mm -hmm. you know, the lies that, that people have told about lead mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. lead poisoning mm -hmm. and what it does to mm -hmm. breathing capacity, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. But as you were talking, and so it's not necessarily an answer to your question, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a conversation mm -hmm. and leading to more conversation. Mm -hmm. So before I went to the, to, to the performances of nothingness in Berlin, I was in London um, doing something called it was it, the, the conference was called Circulations on the Logistical Condition, mm -hmm. and it was with the um, both the Forensic Architecture Group and mm -hmm. the Center for Research Architecture at Goldsmiths, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. one of the people who invited me, Dele Ariemo, 
um, was ta wanted to, wants to talk about black infrastructure. Yes. So as you were talking about mm -hmm. the infrastructure of cement, mm -hmm. I was thinking, well, uh, certainly a black infrastructure of cement mm -hmm. is that we can weaponize sidewalks, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because Absolutely. that's what they said about Trayvon Martin, right? right. He, you know, um, right. And so thinking about, mm -hmm. about you know, what is black infrastructure, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, and, and black infrastructure being lesser lung capacity, mm -hmm. as in mm -hmm. the, in how we, right, right. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking these things mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, physi the physiological state of the black body, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. what does it mean to have lung? And I think about um, outside death, you yeah. know? And I think about those 60 by 60 um, kind of squares of concrete. I also think about the, set of, the sort of this asphalt of street and sidewalk and that curve of like sidewalk. So when we talk about like Russia or shards, I think about the ray in architecture. What does it mean to take up um, a further space, a further space in front of you? You know, mm -hmm. what does it mean to, um, well, these are all rhetorical questions, but I think I asked them through composition. Um, what does it mean, mean to see a distance in the light of the distance fade away as your breath is taking out of you, as you're bleeding mm -hmm. to the ground, right? Mm -hmm. And these are uh, a, a sort of physical measurement mm -hmm. of happenings that are, um, in my mind, continuing in different kind of formations all mm -hmm. over the planet. Yeah. So in, in, when I'm trying to negotiate um, what does it mean to think about breath and material mm -hmm. um, in relationship to the histories of painting, mm -hmm. uh, it behooves me to think about um, not necessarily, um, no, it behooves me to necessarily think about painting moves where the history of the immediate body is concerned, the history of emotionality is concerned, the history of idea of materiality and in excess um, the history of uh, imaging and mm -hmm. the history of uh, propaganda um, are concerned. So mm -hmm. I'm left with um, sort of teasing through what is useful about the history of painting yeah. and bringing in a kind of logic that then send, that sends me to another wise, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah. into to create a, an, in, in, in an idiosyncratic manner mm -hmm. a kind of visual presence that hasn't been considered before. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to or trying to like trying to desperately mm -hmm. like grasp at that mm -hmm. the life before the lynching? You right. know, desperately grasp yeah. at that. I'm trying to desperately grasp at a pictorial space that necessarily mm -hmm. hasn't considered the other why. Right? Well, and so I think, you know, um, that, that when I think about sort of trying to grasp at something, you know, when I think about the image of the little girl who's had the word ship placed mm. on her forehead in the context of In the Wake, oh. um, I, I read that image, of that photograph over... Um, I read that, that photograph over a series, of, over, over, over a number of years. Mm. Um, and, you know, this is why I started thinking about imaging and imagining that, mm. that the kind of image doesn't do the work we imagine that it might do mm -hmm. in relation to black people, mm -hmm. right? That it doesn't necessarily, mm -hmm. that we're always trying to add, to annotate it, to add additional information. Mm -hmm. And of course, it seems to me that there's an annotation which is ship, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, a, mm. it's also a, a reiteration of the mark that's that's mm -hmm. you know already mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. um, but I, I read that image again and again. I looked at that photograph of the little girl again and again and again mm -hmm. um, until, as I said, I, I realized that in trying to sort of account for each, to to really try to read the photograph, mm -hmm. to try mm -hmm. to see it, mm -hmm. and then realizing that that leaf is in her mm -hmm. still neat hair, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which for me was a way to mark mm -hmm. a, the light, a life before the earthquake, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. Um, that the that the photograph is attempting to cut out of the frame, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I was interested in how we read against the way that an image is actually mm -hmm. supposed to be used, mm -hmm. or supposed to be used, because it's not like that image isn't supposed to. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to feel something for the little girl, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's to feel something for her in a particular frame, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? In the frame in which. Mm -hmm. you know, Haiti always gets talked about, mm -hmm. or the frame mm -hmm. in which black girls aren't allowed to be children, mm -hmm. aren't, aren't, mm -hmm. aren't, aren't, you mm -hmm. know, imaginative mm -hmm. beings. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I wanted, mm -hmm. 
so I think then mm -hmm. I, I I reckon through that I can think about a life that was that was in existence, mm -hmm. like a full life. Mm -hmm. um, one one of the things that's so profound about um, the way in which you deal 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 with the this image of the girl and the ship on her forehead is that you talk about, we don't know if that ship text on her forehead is for her greater good. Oh yeah. No. Right? right? We, we don't know, know she's headed to a ship named right. Comfort, which right. is a Mercy class right. hospital ship, but it's the same ship that went to Grenada post-operation mm -hmm. Urgent Fury, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And it's a ship whose primary goal is to take care of U.S. military mm -hmm. personnel. Its mm -hmm. secondary goal mm -hmm. is to perhaps offer appropriate mm -hmm. assistance mm -hmm. to people in need, mm -hmm. you know. And as I, as I move to the text, and I, I go back to that image, mm -hmm. right? I keep going back to that image, and I think about the light in the photograph, mm -hmm. and I think about the light in the reproduction of the photograph in the book, but then I also, I, I can't help but also crawl to think about the light that she's experienced. Like, like I mean, you, you, we, you talk about ocularity um, so clearly in the work. And so as I revisit the images um, in the book and I think about these narratives like the death ship, I think about the kind of, not, not only um, the kind of bodies that are suffering, but the light that they're looking into, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the photograph? Um, you know, what's not in the photograph, what's cropped off, but as I think about mm -hmm. the light within the photograph and that light in the round, mm -hmm. that's another point of, mm -hmm. as we talk about fabulation, mm -hmm. like how am I to think about the texture of the tape on her hair, on her forehead, the value in relationship to her skin, the plastic of that sort of transparency, mm -hmm. the edge or the curve that the oil from her skin then lifts up, mm -hmm. right? So all of that yes. in the photograph yes. then, you know, uh, enters uh, and, yeah. you know, without a doubt, I don't need to talk about necessarily deep conditions of human, it just is and anything else is false and wrong and, and um, uh, inefficient. So to think about this girl, human being on this table looking out at me, mm -hmm. I'm desperate to understand that atmosphere, that air, mm -hmm. that light, mm -hmm. and not to replace her or thinking about this weird empathetic way where I'm trying to m move through her eyes, but desiring mm -hmm. you know, that atmosphere around her to be a place otherwise, yeah. right? That she can experience mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. um, that otherwise, but because it's um, and such a, um, <laughs> It's an overall, this, 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 mm -hmm. this anti-blackness is an overall experience. You know, me dealing with atmospheric light in the painting is dealing, dealing with that, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know. Do you think we should open up for questions? Yes, please, we'll, sorry. We, <laughs> we, we should, should open up for questions. Up. Yeah. Where's, uh, here's a mic. Question, comment. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I didn't want to do that too abruptly, but I feel like we've been talking for a while and we, you know, we should bring you in. Or not. <laughs> um, thank you so much. It was really amazing talk. Um, Paul Virilio talks um, about in in colonial economies the necessity for ecological catastrophe mm -hmm. as a training ground for military yes. and violent police apparatuses. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm curious as to see how like um, certain forms of militarization and current colonialisms, not even post-colonialisms, cl colonialisms, but still existing ones, um, play effect in how you, you shape uh, mm -hmm. and have developed your ecological lens in this work. Mm -hmm. I think that's for you. Oh, that's for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, a couple of things um, to think about militarization now, really um, in a way that's I'm trying to think about it hyper-locally, 
in the, the sort of new incarceration of migrants in relationship to zone architecture, particularly Walmart. So right now I'm entering um, a kind of militarization that talks about the hyperlocal and what does it mean to um, use um, state and government resources to create a system of re-incarceration, right? So, um, you know, thinking about militarization and historically, um, oftentimes I was thinking about Puerto Rico, right? And what does it mean to have um, federal funds, um, both, uh, I'll say, uh, sort of eradicate a kind of clean water ecological system. Um, so then I think about um, the ways in which um, sort of, and this is a Keller Easterling idea of the ways in which zones have been multi multiplied through a kind of new industrial systems and militaries um, definitely p paved the way um, for a kind of co uh, contemporary colonization, both globally and in the southern United States as um, different corporations sort of recolonize um, the black belt. I also think about uh, militarization and colonization as it uh, pertains to technology and development, right? So where does it mean to think about power extraction? What does it mean to think about um, particularly a, a fascination of mine, uh, uh, civil engineering uh, and that relationship to militarization, right? And to you know, what branch of what field of knowledge in this sort of mass um, network of um, uh, sort of contemporary degradation, you know, um, it's a, at what levels does that operate? Does it operate in um, a kind of new uh, move towards ex extraction as we continue to lay uh, pipes down? What, first of all, ne ne neglect existing um, pipelines, right? We pretend that they mm -hmm. weren't there in the 50s and the 30s, or we pretend that they weren't laid. So these, this new, uh, uh, they position this conversation around um, uh, sort of pipeline infrastructure and liquidity moving through the planet as if it's something new when we have eroding systems right now that are spilling everywhere. So I don't know if there's a center point or access point to think about uh, contemporary re colonization, recolonization, extraction, uh, military power, government funding, you know, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm looking both um, th through the lens of uh, the sort of micro and the macro simultaneously, and it shapes uh, my research, absolutely. I think about um, um, these things that um, particularly, um, I'm going to New Orleans to revisit and get to the bottom of what does it mean to um, neglect um, out of sight infrastructure, like infrastructure out of sight all around in relationship to architecture and try to think about um, and understand the, 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 I'll say, when does the building show up, right? When does the community show up? And I'm not talking about the sort of history of, history of architecture before we understood how to render a spatial plane and how to develop architectural drawings that you can then hand to hand, hand to hand. I'm talking about when the, the builders, designers, architects had to be with the makers on site, right? So that's, you know, a thousand, a gazillion, you know, years later now, um, now things are, you know, Keller Easterling package, process, materials, industry that beget another kind of, um, I think, a form of militarization. So there are different points I think about it. And I have a, a sort of different kind of maybe and a brief answer, you know, oh, sort of sorry. thinking about, no, no. I mean, I think the question was for you, but I'm going to jump in there anyway, right? <laughs> so, so, so thinking about questions, that wasn't a... <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, I'm just... Um, so thinking about ecological disaster and militarization. I'm thinking about, well, what, what, about, what about when people are sort of... Be, uh, are imagined as already ecological disaster. So mm. the ways in which I think black people are often conceived of as ecological disasters that must be contained, right? 
Um, mm. You know, I say something in the wake, like, you know, when we are considered mm. the, the, the sort of ground of terror and not the ground on which terror is enacted mm -hmm. repeatedly. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm thinking about, and I can't remember his surname now, his name was Micah. He, was, he had served in the military. He, um, was, he used a sniper rifle in Dallas during a Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. protest, right? Mm -hmm. And the police sent in a, um, uh, I think Patrice Collars writes about this in When They Call You a Terrorist, sent in um, the robot and blew him up, right? So thinking about, um, and I, where else has that happened in the, in the US? Except uh, Christopher, um, what was his name, Christopher Dor Dor Dorden? Do you all remember he? Dorner, Dorner right? Christopher Dorner, right? Where they, sent drone, where they sent drones and then they burned down the cabin that he was hiding in, right? The, the ex-LAPD officer. Mm -hmm. um, so thinking about the ways in which, you know, blackness gets contained as ecological disaster mm -hmm. in militarized zones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All throughout, all over the world. Mm -hmm. There's a microphone coming to you. I don't need the mic. <laughs> <laughs> but they might, is that they might feel like Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Lonnie? I've been, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been knowing Kwase since she was a little girl. And I remember <laughs> when she was going, to, she wanted to go to the School of Performing Arts. And I've always admired her and her talent, her ability to articulate and share and talk. And one, uh, two questions. First, uh, uh, when did you recognize that you had this passion for art? At what age would you say? Uh, do you? Um, passion for art. Maybe when I was at Tougaloo, maybe I was like 22. 23. Okay. Now, were there any personal experiences that you had growing up that kind of developed and evolved into what you are today, that your point of view and how you view things? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is yeah. this the only question that could come I mean, from somebody who no, Yes, 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 yes. And the, the person that's sitting next to my father and uh, not a short distance from my mother. Uh, so I'll keep, it, I'll, keep it, I'll keep it brief, yes. Uh, so two things in particular, very short. Two, two things in particular. Um, my mother is a writer and a director. And all my life, all my young life, I've only known, I knew her in the theater, in, in, small public theater, in small public theaters. And in, we were talking about her uh, directing Pippin at Percy Julian. Okay. So I was a child and the whiz. Um, but um, then I figured out who Percy Julian was. And I, not that I could love my mother even more. But when I found out who Percy Julian was, I was like, oh, man, she's like excellent on all corners, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, just laying on the laps of um, her friends late at night, looking at rehearsal and watching the performance go and seeing her work and struggle and push through one woman shows and embody different narratives just lucidly, it almost like. have those memories. And the other, <clears throat> my father, when we were young, took us canoeing and camping. And so I knew at an early age what ground felt like. I knew what it meant to have someone save you um, from drowning in the river, cooking outside. And he's a, a lover and a profound uh, music man. So, I mean, that's a short but um, true condition. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, thank you for thank you. lovely. I took so many notes. Um, you spoke about work that is useful or helpful as opposed to sitting in the space of abstraction. And I was just wondering if you could speak more about that. Well, did I say that? I don't think you said abstraction. Maybe not. I don't think I said that. I, I, I don't think. I don't think no. it was. I think it was useful. But I, I, I understand. As a, I understand. I, I think, as my dear friend um, Mr. Bay says, I, I, I think I'm going to answer the a, a different question that has to do with abstraction. Mm -hmm. And I said before, um, my relationship to abstraction now is one, and I, and I think I wrote this down, uh, my relationship to abstraction now is understanding how different kinds of modes of abstraction works, mm -hmm. right? And that is political, social, economic abstraction. And then my interest in abstraction as a painter is understanding that surviving those abstraction through painting is uh, my formal kind of search, right? So I believe in abstraction as a um, historical condition that gets to an otherwise. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, painting and making these forms absolutely sort of leads the way. Now, I'm interested in the history um, of abstraction because of the ways in which artists have made moves formally and materially to think through different forms of logic. Right? And that can be everyone um, from Jasper Johns to Jack Whitten to, um, you know, to Goya. And I um, recently saw Goya's black paintings. The move to make those black paintings was for me a critical move in a critical move towards abstraction as a way to th talk about uh, a human condition, mm -hmm. right? So in my mind, abstraction, I'll say it again, is a tool um, to get through the ways in which abstraction as a form has um, created um, the black body as an ecological disaster, right? Mm -hmm. So we can say that too. Mm -hmm. um, and to think about it um, in the field of painting as a way to understand that closely. Well, this isn't in relation to your question, but, but I had the chance to see the beautiful Charles White show today, uh, retrospective at the um, Art Institute Chicago, and uh, thinking about some of those in the last room, thinking about some of those drawings and paintings in which mm -hmm. there are all the cross hatching. Oh. And so thinking about, and I was thinking oh. about his use of line and your use of line. Yeah. He has the figure as well, yeah. but then this, these, yeah. this use. Um, yeah. And, and so thinking about how, how those work together. Yeah. He, um, I'll, I'll say this, we, we, were, we were looking at um, the Harriet Tubman's piece. Yeah. And we were uh, thinking about... The one on the, in the, in the, the big yeah. rock. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you look closely, right, at this art object, you understand the, the sort of length of the tool he was using to make a mark, mm -hmm. right? So the idea of following the mark as body and movement, he was able to create the illusion of the round with yeah. these uh, kind of straight edge marks, right? Mm -hmm. And use value as a tool to create this mass, right? Mm -hmm. And what he left was, uh, well, well, the center, right? The, the, the gravity point of the image is the, the seated position. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what we were talking about. Uh, Morrison's work over uh, earlier, but like when Pilot sits on the porch and she's mm -hmm. seated in that position of ready to go, mm -hmm. right? So White has this ability of both representing what the body is, mm -hmm. right? But what, uh, what, what condition the body is ready to go, yeah. right? Yeah. So you're looking at both his atmospheric light, mm -hmm. the sort of materiality of the work, mm -hmm. and that when, when I look at um, White's work, he has a condition of composition where I'm both looking out and in at the same time. And that's just something you get um, from yeah, being yeah. a genius, right? And doing it over and over and over again. So I don't think about, I don't even think about white in terms of um, 
um, well, I won't, I'll, I'll say, this is how say I think it. about him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, say it in the positive. That's over again, but yeah. Um, <laughs> So, but to think about the way in which he uses negative space yeah. as a way to both talk about directional light, right? So it's also light coming from the back, it's coming from the paper, but the paper, but because of the way he deals with the gradient, it actually looks like he has put something on the paper, but it's just the paper, it's just the light from the paper, yeah. right? So that kind of um, motion or movement around that rock, there's not, it's not fussy. Right, it's not, not over erased, it's not overdone. He knew exactly what the fuck he was doing with those <laughs> boulders. Yeah. And he did it twice, yeah. he did it twice, yeah. right? And then he had the, you know, uh, you know, genius to then put a figure in it yeah. as a kind of gravity point. Yeah. And we were talking about um, pivots and yeah. um, thinking about, sorry, that piece, the white, you know. Um, that kind of um, Harriet as a centerpiece, as mm -hmm. an icon. Mm -hmm. But he also talked about her perception mm -hmm. as iconic, yeah. right? So it's not just us looking at a representation, sorry, I'm bang banging the chair, a representation <laughs> of this icon, but it's also us, he demands that we understand her perceptive <coughs> skills, her sensoria, mm -hmm. her moving through the space, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not just me as subject, yeah, it's yeah. we as subject. Yeah, yeah. I am going to move through all of this, and, right? And, and, and you get that, uh, if, I mean, if I can, I think that's beautiful. No, please. That's beautiful. I think I need to go back with you. <laughs> I, I mean that, um, but but the but also that sort of movement, and I, I'll say the sort of movement through your work, a kind of movement that I wanted to make in my own work, mm. and a movement through his work, um, of a, a serious um, like commitment and political project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's also an aesthetic idea. project. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Is it, it is an aesthetic, a formal project. Yeah. I mean, to understand that anew, to, to yeah. think about or be reminded. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. he's, he's genius. His, his, his form, his move. I mean, you can tell. He, you know, his body is. Mm -hmm. My mother's saying to. I can't, Mom. Sorry. <laughs> so I put the image back up. Put the image back up. I think I can. It's, okay. it's okay. You got to build in for the images, I guess. But um, um yeah, it's just White. Beautiful. Charles White. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Dana. Thank you. Thank you.